Welcome to the third, I believe it's the third keynote of the Applied What We Are conference. And I'm going to say a few words of introduction before I turn the stage over to Franco Berardi. In the meantime, let me reflect on a number of factors, some of which you may be familiar with, others you may not be so familiar with. Sylvère Lautringer has been quoted a number of times to the effect that Gilles Deleuze despised Baudrillard. It's perhaps understandable that someone who would have threatened to write a book called The Mirror of Desire would not be well received by the person against whom it would have been directed. Of course, Baudrillard never wrote such a book, and it suffice to say that it was the Forget Foucault book that contained some fairly toxic comments with regard to the philosophy of desire and the productivity of desire. Foucault, we know, never formally responded to Baudrillard's missive, missile, perhaps. Forget Foucault, but we do know, of course, that he actively undermined Baudrillard with regard to his standing amongst European intellectuals. Some Foucauldians believe, in fact, that, and I've just uh, been lectured about this in, in London a few days before arriving here, that uh, quoting David Macy, of all people, that Foucault backed out of his agreement with Baudrillard to write a similar piece attacking Baudrillard, similar to what Baudrillard wrote about Baudrillard. And that was the foundation of the fallout. There are many stories, many complications in a convoluted relationship. We'll probably not discover anything close to the truth about these matters, no matter how hard we try. Suffice to say, by the end of the 1970s, and with the publication of The Divine Left, Baudrillard had begun to be actively forgotten by the European left, a condition that continued for almost 20 years. Now, 20 years later, what happened? Something extremely interesting happened. In the post-autonomous theorization of financialization, a resource was discovered in Baudrillard's book on consumer society to the effect that he had, he had pointed out that the socialization into the institution of debt was a key factor in the power of the consumer society that had been underappreciated. That's simply one, the first perhaps the first or a small step in the rehabilitation of Baudrillard. I want to point out, however, the most sustained, the most trenchant discussion of Baudrillard that I, I, I've seen so far within this context has been Franco Bernardi's The Soul at Work, in which there is a lengthy meditation on the importance of Baudrillard, in which Franco imagines that the later book by Deleuze and Guattari, What is Philosophy, is actually an attempt to address some of the criticisms that Baudrillard had leveled against the philosophy of desire many, many years earlier in the Forget Foucault book. In The Soul at Work, we have a sustained reflection on simulation, on illusion, on a number of key concepts that represents, for me, the most concentrated rehabilitation within the European left of Baudrillard's thought. So without further ado, I'll introduce to you and give the stage over to Franco Berardi. I'm happy to take part in a conference 
less about uh, Mobiliar because, uh, because of many reasons. Uh, one, because uh, I've got the impression, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I've got the impression that the name, the work, the legacy of Mobiliar has, has, has been sort of forgotten in the academy and, uh, and in, uh, in the public discussion in the last uh, 10 years. Um, the reason probably is that the, the philosophical legacy of Jean Baudrillard is uh, sort of enigmatic, double-faced, and uh, or triple facing. And uh, I will try to, to retrace the, the philosophical pathway of uh, Baudrillard focusing on uh, on, on numbers, on dates, on moments, on historical moments, 68 and 76, 77. And obviously, this is totally arbitrary, and uh, numbers mean nothing, uh, and uh, historical reference mean very little. But distinguishing between Baudrillard in the 60s, I mean Utopie, uh, his relation with the Lanterne movement, and the, the Baudrillard of uh, the last two decades of the century, this distinction, in my opinion, gives us the possibility of uh, um, better perceiving the relation between Baudrillard and the, the spirit of time, the spirit of that becoming. So Baudrillard 68 and Baudrillard 77, I try to elaborate about those two uh, uh, moments, but this is not enough, because uh, I see a third uh, awakening, a third uh, illumination in, in uh, Jean Baudrillard. The first moment is, uh, let's say, utopia. The second moment is certainly symbolic uh, exchange and death, which, in my opinion, is uh, a, a book that marks a break, marks a change of. Uh, uh, the cultural uh, uh, history and of the philosophical imagination of the world. So, to be symbolic exchange and then death. The third Baudrillard, the spirit of death. Baudrillard after uh, September 11, 2001. And what is, uh, I mean, the relation with 68, the Baudrillard interpretation of 68 needs to be uh, referred to, uh, to, how can I say, the relation between um, a the, the Situationist nostalgia 
of Hegel and the radical overcoming of the Hegelian legacy. Many, many things, many signs in, in the uh, first period of Baudrillard, uh, in my opinion, had to be um, uh, referred to his relation with that kind of, I, I, I use the expression nostalgia of Hegel or nostalgia of authenticity, which is la, la, la société du spectacle, which is the, the board thought, the idea that capitalism is essentially the uh, kingdom of alienation and the kingdom of the the spectacle as a sort of a fake reflection, fake reproduction of, of, um, of authenticity, of real life. Capitalism is, in the situationist discourse, is intended as this kind of uh, um, nostalgia for, for authenticity. Baudrillard is uh, going to replace the concept of spectacle with the concept of simulacrum. I think that in the philosophical genealogy of the concept of simulacrum, we have to uh, see a sort of uh, um, acknowledgement and overcoming of uh, the Hegelian and the Bordian nostalgia for the authenticity of life. The ideological background of the year 68, of the movement, of the global movement of 68, is uh, taken between those two poles. The pole of uh, an aspiration to totalizing, to the, the, um, the possible future uh, re-establishment of uh, the truth, which is the wall, about the wall, which is the truth, and on the other side, the, the understanding that the modern promise is, uh, is not going to be fulfilled. The modern promise, the historic promise of our thing is not going to be fulfilled. Then comes 77. I, you know, it's a sort of numerology, it's my business. I, I do not pretend that I am uh, serious when, when I use uh, It's for, because I, I need some order in my mind. <laughs> so I, I grasp the numbers. I, I try to reconstruct my personal memory in relation with uh, a, a, a history which is much uh, bigger than, than my memory, of course. And so I, I say 77. When I say 77, I know what I mean. It's a lot of things. It's not only the, the Italian movement of autonomy, which broke with the legacy of, uh, 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 of the Again, Hegel or Marxist uh, uh, history of uh, political philosophy and uh, which broke uh, with uh, the uh, rituals 
of uh, po political uh, um, fight for power. So, first of all, that movement, but also the London simultaneous movement, uh, the, the no future, mm -hmm. becoming a, a sort of uh, a, a, uh, of prophecy about uh, the, the dissolution of the modern province. But 77 is, uh, is also many other events. It's the year in which Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs create in, in the Silicon Valley, create the technical condition and the conceptual condition for the, for the, the immense, for the huge revolution that we are still living in now. It is the year in which uh, Louis Brown uh, has been born, has been generated, without the presence of uh, a physical mother, with the first human being generated in vitro. 77 is also the year in which Margaret Thatcher starts her final uh, uh, aggression against, uh, against human solidarity and against uh, society uh, uh, as a war, the beginning of the neoliberal catastrophe of the neoliberal revolution uh, which opens the doors to the hell that we are living now. Uh, 77, and in my opinion, uh, symbolic exchange and that uh, is to be read in relation to that change of uh, perception, to that end of uh, the prophecy, of the possibility of the prophecy. See what the prophecy is. The prophecy is uh, a, an imagination about uh, the future, but is also the ability to connect with the spirit of the future. And in a sense, all prophecy is uh, the consciousness, uh, the poetical consciousness that uh, the world to come is, in a sense, the product, the effect of the prophecy itself. All prophecies are self-fulfilling prophecy to a certain extent. All prophecies <coughs> create the condition for a common understanding, imagination, of uh, the time uh, to come, of the future. The end of, of, the, of, the, of the prophecy is the, the core of that book. I, I, I want to read some sentence from the symbolic exchange and death. A certain point uh, in the beginning, page three, four, I don't remember, Baudrillard writes the finalité ont disparu, ce sont les modèles qui nous génèrent. Finalities have disappeared. Models are generating us. I think that this is the, uh, one cannot uh, imagine one cannot think a sentence more uh, great, more um, dense for the understanding of, of what is going to happen. Finality. What is finality? Finality is the project. The project, the conscious project which 
has animated the history of modernity. Finality, finality is, is the force of will, the potency of will that from Machiavelli to Lenin has been the main engine of history. All this is over. Will is impotent. Project is nothing. Because we are no more living in the sphere of finalities, we live in the sphere of models, of generative models. I would say the bio info destiny is the, the intuition that comes out from. Uh, uh, from this book uh, 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 published in the year 1976. <laughs> uh, this is the real coming out from uh, the spirit of, uh, of 68. Coming out from uh, the spirit of that movement, of that political generation, which has dreamed, has uh, desired, has tried to be the, uh, the movement uh, of uh, realization, of implementation, of, uh, uh, of the unfolding of the, of the um, of the realization of the modern problems of democracy, of freedom, of equality. When uh, Baudrillard writes uh, Les finalités ont disparu, ce sont les modèles qui nous génèrent, he says that uh, that future is over. He did not know probably in 76 the Sex Pistols, but he is uh, singing the same song, he is telling the same thing. He is declaring, he is declaring the prophecy is over. No more the prophecy, but the implementation of the generating model is going to animate, to, to produce uh, the history of the world uh, from, from now. At the same time, you know, Baudrillard is declaring the end of the prophecy, never used this expression. But uh, in a sense, I, 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 would, uh, I, I, I would resume, synthesize his, uh, uh, this sentence as a declaration that the political prophecy is no more uh, useful. But at the same time, the imagination of Jean, Jean Baudrillard has a strong prophetic intention. A strange kind of prophecy, a strange kind of prophetic uh, uh, language, because as you know, the prophecies of Baudrillard many times are negative prophecies. The year 2000 will not come. The Gulf War did not take place. Cancelling events. Cancelling the event itself, because this is the poem. What happens when uh, we understand uh, that uh, finalities are nothing and generative models are all? What happens is that the event is dead. No more events. The strike of events, like uh, what the Arab says, sporting the Mexican, uh, uh, who is 
days, I forgot. Um, the word is, uh, is uh, clear of uh, events. And uh, in, in the same pages, Baudrillard uh, writes uh, cybernetic operativity, the genetic code, the aleatory order of mutation, the ascertaining principle, succeed determine, um, determine, uh, determine uh, objectivist science. And he writes, cleansing is the prime activity of this further siècle. The laundering of dirty history, of dirty money, of corrupt consciousness, of the polluted planet, the cleansing of memory being indissolubly linked to the hygienic cleansing of the environment, um, of the racial and ethnic cleansing of population. This uh, is part of the Vital Illusion, a book published in the year 2000. Let's not forget that the 90s have been simultaneously the decade of the creation of the virtual machine in its full uh, structure, in its full uh, a manifestation, the internet. But it is simultaneously the decade of the coming back of Hitler on the scene of the European history, Srebrenica, Gorge, Bukma, Sarajevo, and the conclusion of the Yugoslav civil war cannot be defined in a way different from this, frightening but true. The principle of the ethical state, which is the core of the Hitlerian Nazism, is back, is back in, in the acts, in the words of Milosevic and of Tugin of Mladic and of Karacic, of Izebekovic and, I'm sorry to say, of the Western uh, potencies that have been obliged, obliged maybe, <coughs> accept the, the, the signature of a, of a Nazi transformation of the Federation of Yugoslavia into a mosaic of ethno-homogeneous states. Now, in the year 2018, ethnic cleansing has become the universal principle of the planet Earth. Beginning, I'm sorry to tell you, beginning with the declaration that Israel is a Jewish state. But in the 90s, it was a shock. And this shock is simultaneously, simultaneous to the declaration that the, the Finalities are over, not the declaration, the, the real implementation of the erasure, cancellation of the events. So the event disappears on one side, the event is absorbed by the generating machine of the bioinformatic uh, destiny. And simultaneously, Nazi comes back. We 
don't have any more. We, we have no longer, we no longer feel the pools of events. We are left with the time. Sometimes the Baudrillard's metaphors are so strong and so dense that they give you the possibility of understanding what's happening, a sort of imaginary metaphorical cartography of, uh, uh, of, uh, of very complicated processes. So, we don't have the tools. We have the character of the This is another way to say that uh, the, the, uh, the event as a process which aims to a finality in a space of freedom of uh, indefinibility of indeterminacy, the event gives way to the generation of uh, simulacra, to the simulacra generation. The, the passage from, uh, from the uh, finality to the the generation is, uh, in a sense, uh, cancelling the very possibility of uh, prophecy as uh, imagination of the future. Actually, in the writer illusion, Baudrillard writes uh, prediction. The memory of the future diminishes in exact proportion to the memory of the past. When there is overall transparency, when everything can be seen, nothing can be foreseen anymore. Let, let's, let's try to, to uh, translate the intuition that uh, events disappear and what is left is uh, the generation. That means that prediction is replaced by prescription. And actually, in the age of big terror, what is happening is exactly this. What, what is the, 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 the machine implying and uh, containing and using and finalizing the big data is the creation of a system of continuous recording of the ongoing life and the transmission of what happens into dispositives of prescription. Of the, of, the, of the future. The concept of prescription, in my opinion, is, uh, is uh, speaking volumes about, uh, about what is happening now in the age of, uh, of the interaction and integration of uh, the, the, the absorption, the recording, the, the capture of that from daily life and the emanation of dispositives for the reduction of the future to the past or better, <coughs> the reduction of the future to a, a projection, a generating projection of, uh, of the past. So, the events are there, disappear. No, possible, no more possible prophecy and prediction because prescription has taken the place of the pulsating body of time. Then comes 
September 11th. And everything is sort of <laughs> really very predefined. The small uh, parenthesis. Uh, and you probably remember a beautiful article, a, an article published in Liberation in the year 1996, um, which was about the debt. Baudrillard says the debt is a virtual thing. It's, in, a, it's something that has been orbitalized. He used the, stress, the expression orbitalization, which means that the debt, yes, is growing and growing every day, but is there around the planet and it will never come back. That's important. The debt will never come back. So, who cares? No, you were. It will never come back, but it's a sort of mirror of what we are losing every day. We lose something and something becomes a debt, orbitalized. Then comes September 11th, and everything changes. Everything. I mean, also the vitalization of the debt. Because when, in the year 2008, the Lehman Brothers closed its doors, the debt comes back on earth. What has happened after the, the collapse of the financial system, of the American financial system, then of the European financial system, then, then, then the, the Greek tragedy, and so on, and so on, is a sort of uh, negation, of disclaiming uh, of what Baudrillard wrote in that text, in that article. Yes and not. Because, because uh, you know, the problem is uh, the, the prophecy concerning the end of prophecy is finished. I mean, in 76, in the book uh, about uh, the, the, the symbolic exchange and that, the young say, no more prophecy. It's a prophecy, of course. You say, Prophecy will no more, no longer be uh, possible. Uh, we will be uh, 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 obliged to respect the prescription. So, no more prophets. It's a prophecy. And this prophecy is dismantled by the spirit of terrorism. The spirit of terrorism is a fantastic book because it's totally crazy. You know? <laughs> and at the same time, it's a sort of self problematization of Adriad, who says uh, the fact that we have dreamed of this event. Only Baudrillard could say this voice. And everybody. In that day, as uh, as uh, told and perceived the same, is very is very bad, very nasty, very uh, to say we had dreamed of this event. Uh, of course, uh, that does not mean that we have been happy that three thousand people have died in uh, downtown Manhattan. Uh, that's not a proof of a uh, uh, dishumanity and... Uh, no, no. It's a, a, a philo it has to be understood in a philosophical way. We knew that the event is death. And all of a 
a sudden the event is back. This is our philosophical <laughs> excitement, which is uh, totally disjoined from our political and human uh, uh, horror in front of what happens. But it goes without saying, he arrives, the fact that we have trend of this event, that everyone without exception has dreamt of it, because no one can avoid dreaming of the destruction of any power that is hegemonic to this degree. And this is inacceptable to the Western more conscious. And so, all of a sudden, in that day, um, the strike on events is suspended. It's over. Events come back on the scene of the world. Does it mean that uh, the, the previous transformation, the previous cancellation of uh, the freedom of the event, the previous understanding of the implementation of, uh, of a sort of uh, bio-info automaton is, uh, is, uh, is over. I mean, the coming back of the event is the end of the regime of increasing automation of social life by the bioinfo destiny narrative. The two dimensions have been living together in the last 20 years. We live in a double dimension in which the creation of the automaton and the impredictability of the coming back of the body, of the necro body, of the dead body, of the body as a ghost, as a zombie. The coming back of the body in the form of terrorism. The two dimensions are living together nowadays. I mean, Trump and the Silicon Valley. How, how is it possible the coexistence of uh, two ontological dimensions like uh, the implementation of the automaton and the disintegration of uh, the, the social uh, uh, solidarity and the explosion of uh, terror in that in day in life. How can we theorize, systematize the co-evolution of terror and automation? This is the, the problem. This is the the, uh, the complication, the enigma that uh, we are living every day. In the last uh, few days, uh, in the in some uh, spaces of the alt right uh, uh, American. Uh, discussion online, I see that the word uh, civil war is uh, coming, uh, is emerging uh, more and more every day. Donald Trump, a few days ago, has said the, 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 the rigged, uh, corrupt, democratic uh, are trying uh, to manipulate the election of November, I predict civil unrest. 
in November. I think that we are entering, we have already entered the sphere of the global civil war. The United Kingdom is in a condition of virtual civil war. The world of Europe is in a condition of virtual civil war. Virtual civil war. Virtuality, virtual generation, generation of uh, series of non eventual uh, uh, realities and the coming back of the event as a demented body. I think that the problem is here. What has happened in the years of the marriage between the neoliberal dictatorship and the automation of language is exactly this that uh, the body of the humankind, the body of the planet, has been scotomized, separated from the brain, the automated brain and the zombie body. Those are the actors of the history to come. Unless we find uh, a key for coming back from this end of the prophecy, for the reactivation of uh, a, a poetical prophecy, a reactivation of the brain and a reactivation of the, of the social body. This has been the dream of the last social movement that we have been experience six, seven years ago, the Occupy movement, the most uh, paradoxical uh, ever, the movement uh, which has uh, totally failed everywhere from Egypt to Wall Street to uh, London. But that movement, the Occupy movement, was not a movement for political power, was not even a movement <coughs> for the, uh, for, to stop the financial aggression. It was much more than this. It was a movement for the reactivation of, uh, of, the, uh, of the affective body of the general intellect. It was an attempt to reactivate the link, the relation between the social body and the, the, the global brain. And we are able to start from that failure, from the failure of Occupy. And we are able to develop that uh, intuition or, well, I don't know how we are going to, to, we are going to stay in the hell in which we already dwell. Thank you very much. Questions, I would uh, simply ask you to uh, state your question succinctly and straightforwardly. I'll field, uh, I'll field them and uh, pass them up to uh, Franco. Yes, uh, <laughs> I, I have a small problem. I almost, I'm almost totally deaf. The, the doctor told me, don't fly. 
come to London, I have to fly. So for a week, I, I don't understand a single word of what you say. And <laughs> is a uh, sort of <laughs> and whispering. Let me just come to my I don't know if this will help you here, uh, Franco, but thank you for a wonderful talk. A, a question, though, when you talk about this reintegration, this, 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 poetic, uh, this poetical integration, I wonder what that looks like. I, I, and I, I don't mean to ask for prescriptives or for you to write something out. But I wonder, in this hell, your word, inferno, uh, what, how to get out of this hell? Yes, an integration. But how do we discover that? What, 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 what would you say? Um, well, thank you. You start from the most difficult point. <laughs> I will, I will try to be as short as I can. Uh, and I think that democracy is over. I don't trust democracy. Can I say that? I think that the history of democracy is over. For me, it is. Uh, so how can we expect that the, the, the present uh, um, a, a, the, the, the present uh, um, <laughs> trap can be overcome, avoided, broken. I think that there is only one force that can uh, change in a positive way the future of the world. Okay? And this force is the global silicon value. I say the global Silicon Valley. I mean 100 million people who are working everywhere in the world. And day by day, creating and recreating the global machine in all its uh, uh, aspects. This is my only positive expectation. The problem is that uh, in, in, in psycho-social terms, the, the global Silicon Valley, the general intellect, the network of general intellect, is unable to produce any process of subjectivation. Why so? I, I, the, 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 the reason is, uh, is essentially linked to the, to, the, to the existence, to the productive uh, existence of uh, the general intellect. The general intellect is a brain without the body. Uh, um, I recently read a book by uh, um, an American uh, um, writer called Twenge. The title of the book is I Gen, probably he, he, it's known. Mm. Frightening, <laughs> because it's recounting in a very detailed way the mutation that has happened in the psycho-social dimension to those people who are the, the A and the we B in the next years, the Roman Silicon Valley. The, the, the disgregation of, uh, of empathy, of the ability to feel the presence of the other, the, the, well, the snowflake generation, the, the need for trigger warnings, the fear of reality, the isolation, blah, 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 blah. We know this story. We know our students. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, this is the, I, I only interested in that. I don't care about politics. I don't care about economics. I don't care about what is happening in the world. The only thing that is interesting to me is 
how can the social brain be reactivated? And my answer is, it's the social body which has to be reactivated in order. Occupy, in my opinion, was a, a sort of collective perception of this problem. It failed for, for political reasons because we, and I say we, my generation, as we have imposed, enforced a sort of political identification to a movement which was not political. It was the movement for, let's say, a political movement, a movement for the erotic reactivation of the social relation. I don't see any other perspective. Hello. So, maybe we've had too much positivity. <laughs> that we were too positive about social media, the internet, micro-politics, identity politics. All these positive, positive thinking about these meant we forgot that politics or the social could change, could be used in other ways. I know that's not a question. <laughs> and more nihilism would have helped us. Well, a bit. I see what uh, in the history of Western philosophy in the last uh, century, let's say from Schopenhauer to Heidegger, I see what uh, Leibniz has been. And I quoted Schopenhauer and uh, Heidegger, I could add obviously uh, Nietzsche, and I think that the problem is, uh, is is the problem of the problem of the body, not the problem of philosophy. Um, in in the in the last uh, um, period, I decided to relax, uh, and I and I do not read any more philosophy. I read <laughs> books about the philosophers, and uh, for instance, I read a beautiful book of a German called Engelberg. Um, whose title is, I don't remember the title, it's about the, the, the biography, the detailed biography of Wittgenstein, Kassir, uh, Heidegger, and Benjamin. Beautiful book. Uh, Heidegger Benjamin is not a journalist, he is a philosopher. So and I, I read the books of uh, Jalf, a psychoanalyst who recounts the history of Spinoza, of Nietzsche, of Schopenhauer, and so on and so on. Well, reading about Schopenhauer, about Nietzsche, and about Heidegger, I have come to understand that the problem is a problem of relation with their body, with their sexual body, their inability to deal with the body of the women, their inability to think in terms of pleasure, their obsession with, uh, with potency. This is the origin of nihilism. Uh, uh, the problem is that now, in, in, in the present uh, uh, Western, white, not Western, white world, the problem of potency and of impotence has become a sort of obsession. I speak of impotence in all the senses of the word. I mean, the impotence means 
the inability to stop the financial tradition because democracy is broken. Impotence is the sexual effect of the democratic the decline of the, of the white race. So impotence has become the real political thing in our time. You cannot understand the victory of uh, uh, that monster in the United States if you do not refer this to the growing old and impotent of the American white man. <laughs> this is nihilism at the end. The desire of destroying everything because I'm going to die. <laughs> that is uh, the reality of, uh, of the West, of the white. Of, I say not Western but white because uh, I perfectly understand the alliance between Trump and Putin. It's not a problem of trees or of something. It's perfectly right. We are on the same side. We are similarly white, similarly Christian, similarly criminal, and similarly impotent. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, uh, could we for elaborate a bit on the idea of psychopower? Because he seems to be, he talks a lot about the psychosphere as a completely dystopian region. How can we see anything you know, hopeful in any direction? In that year, on, on my side, I was following the, the situation in Southern I had friends there, I was working with a group of activists in Southern so I was trying to understand what's happening there, what, what is the meaning of that. And on the other side, I was very involved in the, in the, in the creation of the, an Italian uh, cyber culture, uh, the beginning of the internet, and so on. And things uh, happened for me in, in those uh, years. And um, in, in that year, I, I, I wrote two different uh, small books. One was uh, cyber, Mutazione Cyberpunk, not, not translated in English. Um, Mutazione Cyberpunk was all about uh, the creation of the cyberspace and the infosphere and so on. At the same time, I was writing a small book titled Come si cura il Nazi? How can we heal the Nazi? And uh, that was all about the psychosphere. So, psychosphere is, in my, in my parlance, uh, a, a, the, the dimension in which the, the neurostimulation coming from the infosphere are translated into, into, into fear, into desire, into, into, into psychopathological uh, uh, reactions. I underline the word neurostimulation because uh, the, my, my, my semiotic uh, formation uh, is a little bit uh, uh, abhorrent uh, of the connection between information, science, and, uh, and the, the bodily effect of science. Mm -hmm. Semiology has, uh, has been a little bit oblivious of the, an important fact that science are not only uh, abstract beers of meaning, Science are also things, physical things, uh, hitting my brain, my body, my, 
my eyes, my ears. <laughs> and so the, what, what, what is crucial for me is this uh, uh, notion, this concept of neurostimulation. I think that we should always decipher science information at the double level, at the level of uh, meaning, uh, but also at the level of uh, a, 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 the psychophysical effect uh, uh, that they have. The, in in mid-plateau, there is a, 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 I don't remember the title of a cha the chapter in which the uh, uh, Guattari speak of the double uh, functioning of uh, information, of language. And they say on one level it's uh, symbolic, at the other level it's uh, physical. And if we want to understand the media and the effects of the media, we have to, uh, to, to understand the psychophysical level of, uh, of the, of the infospeed. I wanted to go back to the problem of importance. Actually, I wanted to I wanted to ask you a question about uh, the problem with uh, a specific imagination. I, I I would call it the Western imagination or the world's imagination of of, of a certain possibility of utopia, um, utopia which um, uh, is is not uh, understood here as political program. But, but more as an impulse, as a desire that comes uh, from uh, the, the, the creative power that we can find, for example, in poetry. <coughs> you know, when Barack Obama came to the fore, saying those three words that you remember, yes, we can. And at the beginning I said, are you joking? <laughs> <laughs> what, what the meaning of it? And you can, of course, you are the most powerful man in the world, that's right. Then, little by little, I started understanding that uh, the guy is brilliant. Because those three words uh, were not uh, meaningless and were not rhetorical. He was speaking about, uh, he was saying what the Americans wanted to hear. We can. Uh, actually, the years of the Obama presidency have demonstrated the contrary. We can manage. We can cannot even close one tunnel. Mm -hmm. We cannot uh, uh, stop the war in Iraq. We cannot stop the war in Afghanistan. We cannot counter the violence of financial economy. We can do nothing. That is the, 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 the effect of uh, the American presidency. In the same time, the American the, the white, white Americans were growing older. And the slow, the senescence of the white race, not only the white race, the senescence of the human kind, with the remarkable exception of the Islam world and the African world. That, that's important. I mean, I think that uh, um, the, the history of enlightenment and of Marxism has been unable to elaborate the meaning of demography. And I would say, if I can dare, that the biggest mistake of Mr. Karl Marx has been his polemics against John Malthus. He did not understand that in that point, 
there was a huge problem that we are uh, uh, witnessing now. So, the, 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 what is happening in the new century is also an effect of this perception of a political impotence which has to be linked with the ghost of the, the physical impotence of the patriarchal uh, society. That is the point. The end of, patri of the patriarchal rule is, uh, is, of course, the two things come together. The, the end of the patriarchal rule are an effect of panic in front of the emergence of the uh, uh, feminist autonomy, but also, and in this with the perception of senses of uh, the, the dominant phrases of the world. This is um, a bit of the uh, uh, back of my brain, really. Uh, it's really to ask you about the concept of evil. And, and another concept, um, stupidity. <laughs> uh, now, both Baudelaire writes that his book, Intelligence of Evil, could have been called Stupidity of Evil. I'm, I'm just wondering whether, um, against all the uh, hegemony of intelligence through the internet, there is a response through human stupidity. Is natural stupidity. Of <laughs> and, and actually, it was a joke because Echo liked it to be spiritoso, to be <laughs> humorous. Uh, but it's a, 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 a joke that goes uh, really deep because the, the, the automation. Of the function is producing a, an effect of uh, atrophy of the organ. This is crystal clear. In the, in the history of the humankind, this has been happening many times. When uh, Plato was uh, 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 war about the effects of writing, the, the effect of uh, the, the graphic technology will be a loss of memory. That is true. But of course, we have been able to replace the loss of memory with uh, books, uh, with uh, libraries, and so on. And uh, uh, the, the, the Motor technology has produced an effect of uh, atrophy of some abilities of the human kind, obesity, and so on. Obvious. The problem is that now we are facing a, a sort of uh, a, a replacement of the cognitive activity by the automaton. I mean, let's think about the sense of orientation and the effect of the GPS machine. The, the, I, I know by experience that the new generation, the generation that has learned more words from the machine than from the mother, is more and more unable 
to distinguish the streets of the, of the city because of the, of the obvious uh, facility of the obvious. Uh, so, so that, that's, uh, that, this has very much to do with uh, my, the, the political problem that I was proposing before. I mean, my political problem is the relation between the body and the brain of 100 million quality workers of the world. My political problem, the program, you may can say, my political agenda is to reactivate the relation between that body and that brain. I know that it's a sort of anti-evolutionary uh, project because uh, the technical evolution is provoking an effect of stupidity. What is stupidity at the end? Stupidity does not mean that you don't know mathematics. You are very good in mathematics, but you are stupid nevertheless. Why so? Because you are unable to connect your cognitive activity with your desire, with your pleasure, with your sensibility. I think that stupidity is all about sensibility, which means the ability to translate knowledge into bodily opening, the, the, the ability to relate sen sensibly to the body of the other. Uh, yes, that, that, is, uh, uh, that is the problem. And I think that uh, we have only this task to do. Finding a solution for the present stupidity, which is the present in insensibility. The effect of the atrophy of sensibility is something that is happening at a very, very deep level of the, uh, of the last generation of consciousness and of the last generation of expressivity. Uh, I think that this is our task. Face the situation and finding techniques, finding pathways to overcome this kind of stupidity. Um, on that note, um, I would like to uh, close the uh, question.